So what is your take on Love Bonito balancing promoting increasing consumption and your mm-hmm. business top line together with integrating sustainable practices? Yeah, I think the fashion industry can definitely be doing a lot more. At Love Bonito, what we try to do is to ensure that all of this is more thought about in an intentional way, a um, more thoughtful way upstream, right? Meaning that we really don't want to overproduce in the first place, right? We try to keep our inventory as lean as possible. We try to ensure that there's always a lot more durability, um, thought and intention that goes into every piece and every design. For example, take take the pens I'm wearing, right? I'm not sure if you can see on screen, but we try to ensure this mileage, meaning that it's stretchable, right? If it, it takes you through different moments, right? If you're going through your period, for example, time of the month and you're a, bit, a little bit bloated, right? It takes you through that season, right? Um, there's ability also for more stretchability, um, such that if you're maybe put on a few pounds, which is normal, right? And perfectly normal for an everyday woman, um, it still holds, right? It, you can still fit in. Welcome to The Pitch by Garage, where we deep dive into startups and tech and learn key business building lessons from founders, business leaders and experts. Today, I'm really excited to have a conversation with Dion Song, CEO of Love Bonito. Hi Dion, thanks so much for joining me today and tell us more about yourself and Love Bonito. Yeah, hi Vanessa and nice to meet everyone. Um, so I'm Dion, CEO at Love Bonito. Um, we're the largest direct-to-consumer women's wear brand um, in the region. Um, with a mission to empower the everyday Asian woman and inspire self-confidence. Um, and have a very exciting um, grand ambition, right, to become the destination for the Asian woman globally. We've also seen that the retail landscape is constantly evolving, I think faster than before. Mm-hmm. How do you keep you and the organisation adaptable to all these trends? I think for us at Love Bonito, it's really about just being as customer-centric as possible, right? If we're keeping a close pulse of our customers, if we first seek to just understand them, right, be it through data, um, through technology or also just doing it the old school way, right? For us, I think that actually keeps us constantly innovating because consumer preferences are always changing, right? So at Love Bonito, we started observing that, hey, our customers were, were actually experiencing the store in a very different way. They're coming with their girlfriends a lot of times, right? Their girlfriends, their sisters, with their mothers. Um, can we provide a much better experience, right? Meaning that can we perhaps allow them to do communal changing, right? And expand and have modular fitting rooms. Started wondering, hey, I think apart from having just everyone just queue outside the fitting room, which is a very typical experience. Mm, can we enhance the experience by having a fitting room queue system, right? So that, you know, if there's a long line, um, you can get a number. Um, we'll beep you when the room is ready. And Singapore, of course, has most stores in malls, right? So it's quite comfortable. You can either be browsing on the shop floor or you can head out for a cup of coffee, right? And then we tell you when the room is ready. You're also looking at uh, market expansion in, in the US and in um, other northern regions as well. So how does this affect your market penetration in the West if the DNA is so centred to designing for Asian? When we think about the overall global potential, right, we started seeing that, hey, I think actually outside Asia, there was a huge Asian diaspora market, right? Um, in markets like Australia was actually the first market that we started seeing a really good organic traction, um, which really caught our interest initially. We were like, okay, right, we thought we were just sort of doing well in Southeast Asia, but hey, there is a market that has really got traction. And we started asking why, right, and just polling our customers a little bit more. And then we understood that, hey, I think actually in all these different markets, ironically, um, there are very few brands, right, that cater to the Asian female consumer, um, be it the diaspora market, right, or, or the expat market as well. Um, so yeah, so that was um, essentially the thesis, right, and that gave us confidence to expand into other markets um, like the U.S., um, so I would say I think the potential for us long term, it's really reaching out to um, primarily first, right, the Asian female community because this is where we see the gap globally. So how important is it for you to you know, relate to the customers a bit more, show very authentic, relatable image to the customers? We just really believe and we want to empower the everyday Asian women, right? I mean, we say that it's really... When you break up this entire sentence about the everyday woman, right, meaning you, me, right, everyone around us, not the supermodel, right? And we really just want to also support her through that journey and inspire our confidence. I think everyone's talking about inclusivity when it comes to sizes, right? This is something we offer, right, across a broader size range. So we try to reach out to women um, across different sizes and shapes. Can we give women more confidence, all right, and, and um, more, more confidence and sort of the ability to also know that anything, right, is welcome and anything is accepted. 
if you're a mother, if you want to be a mom, that's great, right? Amazing, right? Um, if you don't want to be a mom and you don't choose motherhood, that's okay as well, right? And today, it's not a common topic, but people don't talk about these things. A lot of fast fashion brands have come to, into a lot of scrutiny, especially the heavyweight roles in consumerism and environmental mm. damage. So what is your take on Love Bonito balancing promoting increasing consumption and your mm-hmm. business top line together with integrating sustainable practices. Yeah, I think the fashion industry can definitely be doing a lot more, right? And in, in, in just um, contributing in a net positive way, right? To the environment and of course um, to, you know, to the community that we're present in. At Love Bonito, what we try to do is to ensure that all of this is more thought about in an intentional way, um, more thoughtful way upstream, right? Meaning that we really don't want to overproduce in the first place, right? We try to keep our inventory as lean as possible, um, which is why you typically see that, hey, things sort of go out of stock, right? We try to launch very shallow, um, understand consumer demands, right? Try to triangulate very accurately um, the latent demand um, with our data, right? And then reintroduce replenishments and restocks over time. We try to ensure that there's always a lot more durability, um, thought and intention that goes into every piece and every design, which is why we're always designing um, with a woman's life and her entire life season in mind, right? Um, for example, Tick Tick depends I'm wearing, right? I'm not sure if you can see on screen, but we try to ensure this mileage, meaning that it's stretchable, right? If it, it takes you through different moments, right? If you're going through your period, for example, time of the month and you're a, bit, a little bit bloated, right? It takes you through that season, right? Um, there's ability also for more stretchability, um, such that if you're maybe put on a few pounds, which is normal, right? And perfectly normal for an everyday woman, um, it still holds, right? It, you can still fit in. Um, and what we're doing at Love Bonito is to gradually also diversify um, our supply supplier base out of China, right? To ensure that we're also having greater control of our full end-to-end operations, right? And then really getting further upstream, meaning we're procuring our fabrics ourselves, right? Um, so that we know exactly where our fabrics are coming from. Um, so these are some of the steps. I mean, beyond that as well, there's a lot more that can be done. When you think beyond sort of ESG and, and go into sort of CSR as well, right? So in the past, we've worked with Mattel, right? Um, for Barbie, um, where we're raising funds to support um, also little girls, right? Um, on their education, right? In, in um, poorer countries, for example. And we want to do more of that moving forward. So what is one thing you think the smaller brands um, in this fashion space can follow mm-hmm. to kind of enact a change in the overall mm-hmm. industry? Yeah, I think to be... To be just true to yourself, right? purpose-driven and authentic in anything that you're doing, um, be it also the causes that you want to support. So I think as a, as a young brand, um, find what your main purpose is, right? Really dig deep, reflect, think about your main purpose, right? Think about, you know, I think what you're trying to do for your business and then find a cause that then enhances that and it makes total sense with what you're trying to do on a day-to-day basis. And I can't answer that, right, for any brand because I think it, it really depends on what your brand product is, what your DNA is, right? And also what, as a founder, what your vision is. Right, is for the company. I can see Love Bonito and yourself growing progressively bigger um, into the global stage as well, especially making headlines last year in the big Series C fundraising round as well. What have been the most exciting milestones since the fundraising? So, so that was quite recently, um, but I would say um, really just expanding globally. We were um, just below 50 um, five years ago in terms of team size. Um, today, we're at 350 across the region um, with offices and teams in Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Japan, the US, um, and many other cities as well. Um, so, so that's incredible. Back then as well, we were primarily online. Um, we were just opening our first store um, in 313 Somerset in Singapore. Um, first permanent location and today we have 19 stores right across the region which is amazing right and most recently we just opened a, a permanent flagship in Hong Kong right in central two as well it's also gone into um, just progressively just improving right all of our operations our entire infrastructure our technology and it's not just also about tech right it's everything um, meaning are we investing as well upstream into our sourcing production right the way we are operating um, our customer experience or our store experience um, so yeah, I think it's been a whirlwind journey. Um, and yeah, I think it's awesome that I think most of us, and I speak not just for myself, for a lot of us who have been here for a while, it still feels interesting. Um, you're still learning, right? Um, you're never quite doing the same thing back to back as well, um, which keeps it pretty fun, right? And pretty exciting. Thank you so much for joining us for today's um, The Pitch by Garage. I loved talking to you about Love Bonito and many other issues that we, were, we discussed today. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Vanessa. I hope you have learned valuable lessons on business building and retail from Dion. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, leave a comment, share, and subscribe for more episodes on startups and tech. My name is Vanessa Ho, and this has been The Pitch by Garage. Stay safe and entrepreneurial.